Hello everyone. Welcome to In the Neighborhood with your host, Tim Johnson and Stacy Borho. Together, they are finding out what makes the heart of the Heartland Beat. They sit down with people in your community that lead organizations, businesses, and government. You'll learn who they are and what they're involved in and why. They are the people in your neighborhood. It's In the Neighborhood with Stacy Borho and Tim Johnson. Thanks, Tim Johnson. This is Stacy Borho. Hey, Tim. Welcome. How are you today? I'm doing good. It's first day of May? Yeah. May, May the 1st be with you? <laughs> I thought it was May the 4th. Today we have Norm Kelly. And we're going to go right into it. All right. Uh, Norm Kelly's a Peoria historian. Is that how you would describe yourself? Yeah. Uh, a lot of other things, but uh, really uh, I didn't become a historian until I was 50, so I did have a life before that. <laughs> You started out as a detective, right? I mean, that's kind of a private. What led you into this finding? Uh, I, I started out really uh, in as an insurance investigator, and then worked for an attorney, and then became a licensed private detective. And technically, it's really registered, not licensed. You know, and you have to take tests and so forth. And and I was really the only licensed one here for ever yeah. you know and i and i worked just for one lawyer so that took you from investigating people and situations yeah. to actually investigating peoria and oh i it, you know it was in the back of my mind because in the service you meet another soldier and the first thing he asks you is where you're from and when i said peoria i got this strange reaction to the fact that I was from Peoria, and they always mentioned gangsters and things like that, and it it didn't really irritate me because I didn't know what they were talking about. I mean, I lived right here, right downtown. I'm and 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 being 87 years old, I mean, I've been here forever, <laughs> ever, and 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 so. It was always in the back of my mind, what, what are they talking about? And I would get very defensive, but I, stupid, I didn't know even know how to argue it. You know, I just said, what are you talking about? And they would tell me stuff, and, and I don't remember it. And that's really how it started. I, I went to the library to look it up. I said, what, what is, where do you find out about it? And then I read a lot of, What's the word? Just BS. You can use that on television, can't you? <laughs> oh, I hear it all the time. That's what it was. It was myth. Plain myth. And you could see that, that uh, w these people, grandfathers, being one myself, grandfathers uh, told their kids and, and, and the kids believed all this terrible well look at our statistics and and that's what i started doing yeah uh, coroner's inquests and medical exams and all the old records and there's tremendous records in peoria kept by people like me and i'm very proud of the fact that the my the, uh, my library now has everything that i've done uh i've got to gave it to them and there's no excuse for any Peorian or person who want to know about our town, not to be able to pull me up on Peoria Live, uh, blogspot.com, uh, Google me. I have hundreds of stories online with the library. There's no reason why people, but they want to believe it. They truly want to believe that Bernie Shelton somehow was some kind of kingpin or whatever they want to call him. I mean, they think he was Al Capone. They really do. And don't forget now, I've interviewed personally only living human being in this town that ever talked to somebody who was 90 years old in 1962. Think of that. And they were here. I was here as a kid and they were here as an adult. And I got uh, the, the whole sense of feeling about us and who we were. And then I just spent 
almost 40 years reading about us, writing about us. And now the sad part is I, can't, I have to stop because I, when I research, I research myself. How silly that is. We don't have any real history about Bernie Shelton unless I wrote it. Now, there are books written about him. Every one of those authors know that I think they're just myth writers. They're just got it from their uncle's brother's cousin who knew his, his sister. That's where they got all this stuff. And, and that goes for all the local writers, too. They're writing right this or a second. So uh, uh, one thing I want to do is talk about first. So you cover kind of 1828. That's right. To 1950s. One. 1951. Mm -hmm. 51, the Korean War broke out and I was gone. Okay. Uh, and and uh, uh, Peoria in 1951 was a very exciting time. We were number one at Bradley, you know, number one in the United States. We had um, a terrible... Uh, time Bradley had a scandal about point shaving and 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 during uh, 51 we were really depressed I mean this town went into mourning because Bradley was everything to us as far as outside activity because uh, Peoria Illinois uh, all during those years just think of that uh, how exciting it was to come downtown. At one time we had 17 theaters scattered around. Wow. And we only have two left. Well, the Apollo and the Madison is here now. But our life was spent, I grew up in El Vista, which is just like um, Little Abner's place, you know, where he grew up, I think. But, and, and, and the, the only activity uh, that we really wanted to do was to come down here. This is where everything was. And that's where the gangsters were and people were being shot and machine gun fire and gambling and, and prostitute and horrifying, terrible things. That's exactly what they want. They want you to believe, these people who believe this. And I I've, I've, uh, spoke in lectures and had public lectures for a well, 37 years. Sometimes I would basically argue with the idiots that came to see me. I tried to be halfway decent, but I gave that up. So you back know? in 1928, you started in 1928, is kind 18. of... 1828, thank you. So what what was happening in 1928? Well, in 1828, we were just a small little trading post type thing. We had seven or eight buildings, and we even had a library, a little library, believe it or not. We had a, a, a distillery, one little, mm -hmm. we had also a um, two breweries type, not breweries like you're thinking, it would be more like a mom and pop thing, you know. But that was the beginning of it. And then in 1835, uh, they voted to become a town. And that was a little legal thing they had to do. And uh, now don't forget, between us and St. Louis, what is there? Zero. And between us and Chicago. So the people that grew up here and, and came here, they saw something. What? I come here and I look and I think all they saw was water and uh, trees and prairie, a lot of prairie. Uh, but uh, when they came there, there was this clearing, and that was Peoria. Dr. Roos came here, and what he saw, I don't know. And he called his, called his wife, yeah, he was emailed her, right? <laughs> anyway, he convinced her to come here, and he built Roos Hall, which is magnificent venue. You know, not that I would know what that meant when I was a kid. And, and, and he began, he formed a first doctor's organization. And, and slowly, uh, everything that he did brought in some pretty intelligent person. The distilleries, the breweries, they brought in highly um, skilled people, and which brought in the banks. 
which brought in more manufacturing. And it, we, we brought in people, and when they got here, they uh, seemed like every 10 years, along came this other man, this man or this woman, you know, like Mrs. Bradley. They kept, every time they came here, they did something for the town. And it kept going like that. It was amazing to me. And then they came to buildings. We really didn't begin to build our tall buildings until 1912. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but you can imagine uh, the steamboats came in and went here. About every 30 minutes, we would have maybe 457 of them would come during the year. Think about that. And then, of course, the railroad came. That was a storm. That brought the Irish and that pathetic. My uncles and my <laughs> brothers and my, my, all my side of Irish people came. They really came with the railroad, you know. And, uh, of course, they sniffed the air, right, and smelt that alcohol on all my relatives stayed right here. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute true. You know. And then, uh, it, it, and then we had Lebanese. And the German and the Spanish and the French were already here, and and and, and Peoria's initial history uh, was uh, vaudeville, vaudevillians early on, uh, and Roos Hall played a big important part of that. Venue counted, and the joke about Willow Play and Peoria—they have it all wrong. They think it has something to do with vaudeville. <laughs> Why, you just hone your act here in Peoria so you could go on to New York. Are you people crazy? <laughs> We're talking 1900. How are you going to go to New York? How are you going to get to Chicago? Well, you can come to Peoria, Illinois, uh, from New Orleans and St. Louis on a, on a steamboat. Mm. Got it? How in the hell am I going to get then from here? to go up to Chicago, it's 157 miles in 1900. Why, what do you do, gonna do have a, a limo or what do you, <laughs> don't you understand? And, and then when, when Prohibition came, by, by 1917 by the way, by a phony, phony uh, act uh, that conserved food to feed the doughboys you know, for the war, all this is phony. It's all because there's only one name you have to remember, and that's Wayne uh, Bidwell uh, Wheeler. That's the only name you need to know. Just look up Wayne B. Wheeler and you'll understand everything because he was in charge of the uh, Saloon League, you know, and, and everybody thinks that uh, in Peoria, Illinois, it was the people marching around with signs and the women going in and out of the taverns and against temperance. You know, they wanted to stop alcohol. It will bring, bring heaven on earth. That's an exact quote. And these people were doing God's work, and they meant it, too. They really did believe it. And, and Wheeler, who was a wheeler and a dealer, who owned six congresses, that's 12 years. He really did. And he's the one that uh, would take, that's a four one-hour lecture. That's, I can do seven hours on prohibition. Hmm. Absolutely. And that was important in Peoria because we were the alcohol capital of the world. They called us the alcoholic capital of the world. <laughs> And they were pretty much right. We were know. kind of like the Las Vegas of the U.S. at that point, we right? We were. Wow. We had, we had uh, at one time, let's, we have to jump to 1940, we, we had 242 taverns within the city limits, which is only 9.98 .9 square miles. Where we're standing, where we're sitting, yeah. within just a short, on Adams alone, we had 65 taverns, you know, and, 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 and gambling. And we had uh, absolute nine flat out casinos. It was like, like small town uh, in, where would, in Reno, in, back in the 40s, that would be who, it was casino. Now, who are these people? We have to have gangsters to run them, you know. And so that's where 
uh, Bernie Shelton comes in, which he was nothing. He was just a scared man who was terrified uh, from coming from southern Illinois. When, and I don't care if he killed 99 people in his monk. I don't care because it had nothing to do with Peoria. When he came here, uh, he was uh, uh, wanted to get into gambling and, of course, wanted to make a living, him and his brother. Well, so did my uncle and so did my uh, relatives of mine and all kinds of people. We had, we had uh, all those taverns. These are businesses. Our prostitution was business. We had 995 so-called registered prostitutes. I mean, I mean, by that I mean we, meaning the people who ran the government and, and, and the madams and people, the, this was an industry, a business. If you don't want to end on it, then go to your church. We had 102 churches. So you get my point? In, in Peoria, you chose what kind of life you a, wanted. A lot more do. taverns and churches at that time. Yes, yeah. Yeah. but then uh, where do you think uh, they, uh, the taverns in, in, on, on our, or were on the corners and in neighborhoods. You're, this is the neighborhood program. We had uh, 372 grocery stores, 72 restaurants. This was the most, the busiest place in the United States, this tiny little place, this little town was commerce and wonderful shopping. People came from all over to shop, you know, and, the, and we couldn't go anywhere. We took over Averyville and that was a real fist fight, you know, the truth. And later on, the, the uh, Supreme Court ruled in our favor and we took over Averyville. We wanted West Peoria, we wanted the Heights, and we wanted Bartonville once. We, meaning uh, the people who ran, including Mayor Woodruff, who was a mayor 11 times for 24 years, and, and it was a real political town, and it, it, the ins and the outs, you know, and the dries and the wets, and the do-gooders and, and the gangsters with machine guns. I said more than once there were more machine guns in your mother's bathroom than there was in this town. There was not one coroner's inquest and medical examiner found a 45, which is what a machine gun is. All of our murders, all of our murders, I, I wrote a book called Murder in Your Own Backyard, and, and um, oh, the other book I wrote, so many of them to tell you the truth, I, I, even, I couldn't even really tell you the title one. But the point I'm trying to get at is, the way you got killed was stay downtown at 3.30 and start a fight with the guy next to you. That's how you got killed in Peoria. We just have a couple of minutes okay. left. Um, talk about other firsts that have happened here or, or things that started in Peoria. In Peoria, yeah. Illinois? Well, oh, well, first of all, we have the longest parade. That's first. We have our saw, uh, baseball. That was first. We had one of the, the greatest bicycle racing and, and uh, manufacturing in, in the United States. We were the alcohol capital of the world. We also had uh, incredible things on the rivers. Uh, did you know Grandview Park is the longest linear park in the United States? Everything that we did here uh, in the beginning uh, was really a, 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 such a mixed, diverse place that that's where will it play in Peoria. It, the, the man came here in 1942 and said, you know, if we're, we're going to do a test market, that's where it really came from. And he said that if it will sell here mm -hmm. in Peoria, and they have a lot of test markets, and we were first in that. We are also, if you want to talk about penicillin, they're making a big deal out of penicillin, which is a joke because the only reason why the United States government picked us is because they owned the, the building, and we had corn around here. And, and I'm that was good it. with first, even if it, <laughs> yeah. it just happens. And, 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 of course, all we wanted to do, all we were supposed to do here, is to get it on the market and to, to make it into a major 
marker rather than just, uh, and I wrote a story called, Mo we called her Moldy Mary, because all she was looking for was a uh, cantaloupe with the right proper mold. And all of it in Peoria, uh, we, we uh, had uh, people that came here and set up shop and started new things going on in Peoria. It's going on right now. Mm -hmm. But if you notice now, they're trying to recapture Peoria's slipping away. If you compare it to what I know about Peoria, the only place we can do is head for Dunlap. I mean, there is no other place to go. You know? But in our neighborhoods, we're strong. We were um, very patriotic. We had a, a Caterpillar, Holt. We have Keystone. Not ours, is it? It's in Bartonville. But we had uh, a lot of uh, places in our town and the uh, we had uh, businesses that came here just because we were Peoria. We have a great workforce, but we did have strikes. We really had, it was a labor town and I could really regale you with some terrible things that went on in Peoria because of strikes and things like that. So our time's pretty much up here, but- um, Where did it go? Yeah, it went pretty quick, <laughs> did it? I just talked to you about a second. Yeah. So, yeah, this is Stacy's probably easiest interview so far. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Wind up. Wow. Thanks for all your sharing with us. You know, one, one uh, fortunately, what I really like about is that I've already written about it. Yeah. It's tough for me now to write anything new. So where's the best place for people to find out more about you? Well, here, Peoria Life. It's wonderful I, because it opens up very quickly and you can start reading. You can... Uh, um, we have some of your, in our articles, if you go to articles within Peoria Life, they can read right. some of the articles that you've written for us. I have interviews from the library and here and, and C-SPAN and you know, I'm tired of myself, you know, <laughs> I really am. I wished... Oh, I write fiction, and that's probably what I really like to do. But I stop. How many books did you write? Fourteen. Fourteen. I have two, three that I didn't publish. The best one was about Tom. We're off the air. Nope, not yet. Oh, the best one was about uh, <laughs> uh, Thompson murder, 1935. I'm a really a true crime writer. I've written over 200 murders, not just Peoria, all kinds, small towns uh, all over. Uh, it's amazing the small towns that have had terrible murders, really terrible murders. And in Peoria, Illinois, uh, when during Prohibition, which was 13 years, we averaged 5.5 murders. Wow, how did we survive? On And of course, the machine gun fire, you know, you had to really uh, when you go downtown, you had to wear a helmet. You know, I mean, that's how stupid they are. They really were. Well, it's always great to talk to you. Oh, thank You're you. Always, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, but um, Peoria is, a, I don't know, would, would you call have called it a great city? Oh, man. Yes. I, I, I'm hoping that we're on our way back. This is Norm Kelly, Thank uh, you. local historian for Peoria. Um, he really specializes from 1828 to 1951. And um, you can find some stuff here. Library has some of his books. Um, you can check out stuff there. Uh, but the authentic magazines. Norm Kelly. Local magazines mm -hmm. also have stuff from him. So thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for asking me. And uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and um, Peoria TV on Channel 17 Cable. Have a good day, everyone. PeoriaLife.com.